Hi everyone, I'm Yasha, and welcome to the 36th episode of Election Scoop. And today, we'll be talking about the OP states, which are holding their midterm elections. That's Ohio, Oregon, Oklahoma, and Pennsylvania. So let's dive right in. First up is Ohio, the classic, I mean, along with Florida, Iowa, maybe New Hampshire, maybe Nevada, I don't know. One of the classic swing states. I mean, this this state is famous for swinging down the middle and voting with almost every correct presidential candidate. And so for governor, Democrat Richard Cordray is facing off against Attorney General Mike DeWine. Man, we got a lot of Attorney Generals running for governor. I mean, tons of states. So, President Trump won this state, and he won it by not a... Not a large, but not a not a hair scrapey margin either. But the the Democrat has a visible, close but visible lead in this race, and so we can rate it as a toss up. Likewise, um, well, actually a little differently, um, for the Senate, incumbent Democrat Sherrod Brown is uh, running against Republican Jim Renacci. Now. In a classic example of both the incumbency advantage and the propensity of states to vote differently in presidential elections than in other elections, Brown has a pretty large lead. I mean, this is, what, a um, 16-point uh, lead over Renacci. We rate this as likely D. I... I I got the, I, I get the ratings usually from Larry Sabato and the Crystal Ball because I really I like those ratings. I feel like this should be solid D, but I understand their their rationale behind making it likely Democrat. I mean, uh, it's almost impossible that this seat will switch hands regardless. Now for the Ohio House. Ohio has 16 districts. It's quite a large state, and for the most part, we're not expecting any change. But the 1st, 12th, and 14th districts, and to some degree the 7th, 10th, and 15th, are somewhat competitive, and so there are opportunities for Democratic pickups, but we're not expecting anything there at this point. Oklahoma, um, not a swing state, although, to be fair, for the governor's race, Democrat Drew Edmondson stands somewhat of a chance against Republican Kevin Stitt. He is pretty behind in the polls, and we rate this as tilt Republican, but as late as 2010, o Oklahoma had a Democratic governor, Brad Henry, and he, in his last election in 2006, won two-thirds of the vote, and other Democratic candidates since then have come quite close. Oklahoma is, um, for political purposes, part of the solid South, and um, Democrats do pretty well here, respectively speaking. At least for the governor's race. We're not expecting anything for the House race. But Oklahoma is not as Republican as it seems. When you dig down into the local and state levels, you'll, you'll find some surprising demographics and some trends that indicate a history of a competitive and even a solidly Democratic past. Next up is Oregon. Now, I guess you could say Oregon is like the mirror of Oklahoma. Because everyone sees Oregon as a classic coastal liberal state. But, oh well, by liberal I mean for the Democratic Party. But this, is, this race is putting that to the test. Incumbent Democrat Kate Brown is running against Republican Newt Bueller. And what we've seen here, despite Hillary Clinton's solid win in the state, is that Brown is leading Bueller by only four points. Which is not a lot. I mean, she's the incumbent. She has the incumbency advantage. It's a progressive state. And you think, alright, this is in the bag. We can go home now. But no, this race is a toss-up. The Republicans might actually take this district. And that's why I say it's the mirror of Oklahoma. When you really start looking at some of these quote-unquote solid red and solid blue states, you'll act, what you'll actually find in most cases is a history of competitiveness once you dig past the presidential election level. Again, like Oregon, or like Oklahoma, Oregon's house, however, is not competitive since you have incumbents and 
uh, all that fun stuff. But there is a safe Republican district. Much of the the rural uh, east of the state, uh, since the second the second district by land covers a majority of the state, it's just that it's relatively uninhabited, and it is most of eastern Oregon is quite heavily Republican. Last but not least is Pennsylvania. Man, we got some swing states here. Uh, although not in this race, incumbent Democratic Governor Tom Wolf is running against Republican Scott Wagner. Now remember, President Trump won the state by like a point, maybe less than a point, maybe a little greater than a point. A small margin, not anything big, so this isn't a Republican state or anything, but he won it. Despite that, Democrat Tom Wolf is running a solid uh, 16 points ahead of Scott Wagner. I mean, this is a massive lead for a supposedly swing state. This is a safely Democratic seat. Wolf is popular. He is uh, riding on the coattails of local and state Democrats. Um, his I discussed him in a previous episode, but uh, his lieutenant governor uh, is quite a character. Uh, name's Fetterman, actually, and you, know, you should look him up. Now, there is Pennsylvania's Senate. Very similar. Incumbent Democrat Bob Casey is running against Representative Lou Barletta. Now, it's amazing how close these numbers are. Casey has 1% less. Barletta has, uh, I think, yeah, one also 1% less than the candidate, their respective candidates for the governor race. And this is also safe Democrat. Again, going into 2018, we hadn't forecasted this. I mean, this is a state that Trump won. We didn't really necessarily expect a Republican landslide or even a Republican victory. But we did not expect it to not be close. This is a not a close state. This is a... You, you'd think just from these few races that this is a solidly Democratic state. But no, it's not. It's the incumbency advantage and um, ancestral support for local parties at work. Last but not least is the Pennsylvania House. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Ohio and Pennsylvania have super complicated house races, and the other two, Oregon and uh, Oklahoma, are pretty much snooze fests. So, remember, these asterisks mean whichever side they're shaded as, the opposite party controls them. Now, Pennsylvania was a pretty gerrymandered state until last election, and as of redistricting, we predict that the Democrats will pick up four seats. We, we were, it's most likely they will pick up the 6th, 7th, 8th, and 17th districts, while the Republicans are going to pick up the 12th district. And that District 1 is a toss-up, you know, and there's some competitive races here and there. To put as a total, most likely this will be a very good state for the Democrats. They could gain up to three or four seats. They could potentially gain more. Or, I mean, I guess they could theoretically, if they do really badly, flop it. But that's quite unlikely. Most likely, you've got that those four races, 6, 7, 8, 17. One of them is cancelled out by the District 12, but then maybe they gain back the District 1. Anyway, this is a really good uh, forecast for the Democrats. And we'll be back next time with a whole new list of states to cover for the midterms. So thanks for watching, and remember, don't forget to vote.